Hello everyone, my name is Chris. I'm the product lead for Android Health here at Google. And I'm Brianna, a developer relations engineer on the Android Health team. There's been a lot of momentum on Android Health recently. At this time last year, we announced that Health Connect would become part of the Android platform beginning with Android 14. Since then, we've seen so many new innovative Health Connect integrations. Today, the total number of Health Connect compatible apps exceeds 500. At the same time, there have also been a number of new Wear OS watches like from Xiaomi, Oppo, and OnePlus that have launched. And more fitness apps have brought experiences to Wear OS using health services. Today, we're excited to share new features that you can soon start adding to your experiences. In this session, we'll share updates to Google Fit, Health Connect, and health services on Wear OS. You'll learn how you can use these tools to provide a strong foundation of secure and accurate data to fuel your app. Before we dive into the latest from Health Connect and health services on Wear OS, we wanted to share an update on the Google Fit platform. We know many of you use the Google Fit APIs to build smarter health and wellness apps. We recently shared that all Google Fit APIs, including the REST API, will turn down on June the 30th, 2025. So as developers, you probably have questions about the best way to maintain key functionality for your users. There are two main options for migration. That's Health Connect and the recording API on mobile. Health Connect is a common API for storing and sharing health and fitness data on Android phones. Developers can read from and write to an on-device data store. If you are using the Google Fit APIs, you might find this is the best option for reading data generated by other apps or to share data with other apps. Health Connect gives users full control over the privacy of their on-device data. Users can grant and revoke access to the health and fitness data in Health Connect at any time. If you use the Google Fit recording API, you'll be pleased to know that a version of this API will be supported as part of the Android Health platform. This API will continue to make it easy to record steps and soon distance and calories in a power efficient way without the need to configure and connect to Sensor Manager or show a foreground service notification. What's more, this version of the recording API is not tied to a user account and doesn't store data in the cloud by default. Updating your app to continue using the recording API only requires a few lines of code. The get recording client method changes to get local recording client, and Google sign in is no longer needed. The history API functionality will merge with the recording API and provide up to 10 days of local storage from which to read steps, distance, and calories. To read data from the local store, use the local recording client's read data method. Today, you can find updated documentation on developer.android.com to guide you through the migration process. Now I'll turn it back over to Chris, who will share some updates to Health Connect. I'm excited to share two new capabilities that are coming to Health Connect this year. Today, apps can only read from Health Connect while in the foreground or while running a foreground service. Coming soon, with user permission, you'll be able to read data from Health Connect while your app is in the background. With this new functionality, you can keep your app up to date while users get other things done on their phone. For example, a nutrition app could update your meal plan based on the workout you just completed. First, you'll need to specify in your app's manifest that your app can read health and fitness data in the background. At runtime, users can allow or deny this request. Once allowed, your app can read data in the background. To help preserve devices' battery life, your app can read data in the background only once every 30 minutes. Next feature is history reads. Health Connect compatible apps have been able to access up to 30 days of past health data from the permission granted date. Soon, users will be able to choose to share historical data with your app, allowing you to get more complete picture and view of your trends and unlock powerful insights. You enable this functionality in a similar way to background reads. First, you'll declare the history permission in your app's manifest. At runtime, after the user grants access, your app can read historical health and fitness data. Again, users can revoke both background and history permissions at any time through Health Connect settings. 
we'll be releasing new documentation for these features in the coming months. We'd like to highlight some new experiences developers have been building with Health Connect. Adidas Running is launching a pilot program with Health Connect to expand their adaptive training feature using exercise routes. As Adidas puts it, Health Connect enables our users to benefit from expert guidance and earn rewards in the form of Addy Club points by tracking their activities regardless of their location. This feature enhances user engagement in the Adidas membership program by offering exclusive experiences and fosters business growth by boosting customer loyalty. Terumo is one of the leading manufacturers of medical devices globally and produces one of the most popular blood glucose monitoring systems in Japan. With user permission, they write vitals like temperature, blood glucose, and blood pressure to Health Connect for other apps to read. Terumo empowers patients and healthcare professionals, offering useful insights and personalized recommendations for improved health outcomes. Health Connect streamlines information sharing, eliminating manual processes. This empowers Terumo to better support users and care teams, enabling healthier outcomes for patients. The New Zealand Ministry of Health recently launched a pilot program with Health Connect to monitor remote patients for heart failure. The country's Ministry of Health believes technology is key to supporting people living with chronic disease in hard to reach communities. By having the ability to aggregate data from multiple health monitoring devices, the New Zealand government is able to reduce costs while improving access to care for their citizens. Better Sleep is a meditation and sleep tracking app that helps their users improve their sleep quality and well being. With permission from their users, Better Sleep writes sleep data to Health Connect and reads sleep data from any sources, including Better Sleep, connected through Health Connect. This Health Connect integration allows Android users to gain more in depth insights about their sleep. We're introducing new data types and testing tools to help you create strong and fulfilling experiences that are powered by health services on Wear OS. Over the next few minutes, I'll cover updates related to health and fitness features. To learn more about the other upcoming Wear OS 5 changes, like large displays and watch face format version 2, watch the talk building for the future of Wear OS. Health services makes it simple to create power efficient health and fitness experiences on Wear OS. Starting with Wear OS 3, Health Services benefits from modern Wear OS device architecture by offloading sensor data collection to the Low Power Microcontroller Unit, or MCU. This allows the application processor to be suspended for extended periods of time, keeping the device in a low power state even when recording an exercise. All this results in less battery consumption while still providing high quality tracking of fitness metrics. In Wear OS 5, the Health Services API is making it easier for your Wear OS app to support robust, power-efficient coaching experiences. We're introducing new data types for running and support for debounced goals. There are a lot of uses for advanced running metrics. In a workout, you can compare stride length and ground contact time to understand a number of things, including when a runner may be getting fatigued. Compare metrics over time to analyze changes in running form and performance, help predict injury, or perform other analysis. And starting in Wear OS 5, you'll be able to request advanced running metrics, just as you do other data types that health services on Wear OS supports today. Your app can access advanced running metrics after the user grants the activity recognition permission. Request the exercise capabilities to see which metrics the running exercise supports on the Wear OS device that's running your app. From there, your app can access these metrics through exercise updates and surface them to your users. Finally, let's talk about debounced goals. Debouncing refers to optimizing the number of input signals to make sure a single, clear action is prioritized. In Wear OS 3 and Wear OS 4, Health Services provides support for goal alerts. For cumulative metrics like distance, duration, and elevation gain, your app can set one-time or milestone goals. A one-time goal alerts only once when a specified value is achieved. For example, notifying a user when they've run five kilometers. A milestone goal can alert every time a milestone is achieved. An example is an alert that the user receives each time they've run an additional kilometer as part of an overall workout. But goals aren't only for metrics like distance and duration. Health services also provide support for instantaneous metrics like heart rate, speed, pace, and average pace. As an example, 
a user could request your app to alert them when their heart rate dips below 150 beats per minute or above 170 beats per minute. But what happens when your user is warming up to this target heart rate zone and their heart rate is quickly fluctuating between 149 and 151 beats per minute? Your app would receive multiple alerts in rapid succession, which could then be surfaced to the user and wouldn't provide a particularly helpful signal as to what they could adjust. With Wear OS 5, we're introducing two new ways to better time goal alerts for instantaneous metrics. These are duration at threshold and initial delay. Duration at threshold is the amount of uninterrupted time the user needs to cross the specified threshold before health services will send an alert. Initial delay is the amount of time that must pass since goal registration before your app is notified. The goal of both duration at threshold and initial delay is to reduce the number of false positives and repeated alerts and minimize the number of times the application processor wakes up, leading to improved battery life. But what does this mean in the context of an exercise? Consider an app that allows a user to set target heart rate zones and a user set target of 150 to 170 beats per minute. With previously available goal settings, if the user's heart rate fluctuated between slightly higher than 170 beats per minute or slightly lower than 150 beats per minute, the app might alert a user instantly each time they exit this heart rate zone, even if it was only for a single second. This can be distracting and doesn't account for things like warming up or the fact that heart rate just takes time to adjust. With duration at threshold, your app can specify that the goal only notify once the user has been outside of their target heart rate zone for at least 15 seconds, as an example, or any other value that you set. It takes time for heart rate to go up or down, so you can set an initial delay of say one minute from goal registration to reduce the number of times your app notifies the user as they lower or increase their intensity and help spread out the alerts. Both the new running data types and support for debounce goals will roll out with Wear OS 5 later this year. Finally, to help you test all these features and more, we've added a new sensor panel to Android Studio. This panel makes it easier than ever to test your apps across a variety of device capabilities and configurations. The synthetic data panel supports over 80 different activities, including alpine skiing, rock climbing, and rowing. You can use it to toggle on and off different device capabilities like heart rate and distance and observe your app's behavior. Let's set target heart rate to 150 beats per minute and distance to 500 meters. You can see the updated values in the app. Now let's toggle off heart rate and distance to emulate a situation where these values are not available. Our app should be able to handle this without crashing because our app checks the device capabilities at startup. As you can see, there are no values for heart rate and distance, but calories and active duration are still updating. The panel can also trigger events such as golf shots and sleep events. It's available to try out in Android Studio Koala. Thank you for tuning in to hear the latest from Android Health. We're excited to see what experiences you can continue to build. Make sure to check out the documentation and learn more about the optional migration paths from Google Fit APIs. And finally, visit the Health and Fitness Developer Center to learn more about building health and fitness apps on Android.